Where the fuck am I supposed to click this thing? God, this sucks. Hey, what's going on? Shane at Shane Hubbard Fit. Hey, what's going on? Shane at Shane Hubbard Fit. COVID. Hey, what's going on? Shane at Shane Hubbard Fit. Today, I want to talk to you about the priorities for losing body fat when it comes to calories that you eat and calories that you burn. All right, so let's go ahead and first talk about calories that you eat. So I know there's a bit of a glare on the screen from my window. I'll do my best to explain them and highlight them, and then also I'll put them on the screen so it's easy for you to follow along. Before we get started though, in the comments section down below, let me know what your current goal is. Are you trying to lose body fat? Are you trying to maintain your weight? Are you trying to build more muscle, lose more fat at the same time? What is your goal? Let me know in the comments section down below. All right, so let's dive right into calories in. This is probably the most important part of losing body fat. And the most important thing for losing body fat when it comes to the calories you consume is total calories consumed. So total calorie intake is the most important part. It's number one. Nothing is as as important as the amount of calories you consume or total calorie intake. So in a lot of cases, somebody might ask me, well, you know, how much protein do I need? Or, you know, how many carbs should I eat? Or how much fat should I eat? Don't worry about that yet. Focus on a calorie deficit that allows you to lose body fat in your total calorie intake. We'll take care of the protein, the carbs, and the fats after that first get that big total calorie number taken care of. It might be difficult at first when you're trying to orient all of your different macronutrients on how to prioritize them, get the right foods, get the right combination of foods. Just remember that total calorie intake is the most important thing, okay? Now, if you eat more protein and you go over your calories, it's not the end of the world, right? I don't want you to think that it's like black and white and then like you're a terrible person and, and you're gonna gain fat because you went over your calories. But on average, you wanna try to do your best to stay under that calorie total. The more consistently you can stay under that calorie total, the more consistent you're going to get with your fat loss goals, okay? So that's number one. Number two is protein intake, all right? So when we figure out our total amount of calories, the next thing we wanna figure out is what percentage of that do we wanna get from protein, all right? And the general rule of thumb is anywhere between 25 to 30% is what you wanna shoot for. And that's going to help you not only maintain muscle, but if you are strength training, it's also gonna help you build muscle. And remember that building muscle and then maintaining it is one of the most beneficial things that you can do for your resting metabolic rate, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But on the whole, what you wanna focus on is total protein intake after you've focused on total calorie consumed. Now, a typical question I get about protein is, should I eat multiple meals with protein in? Should I have five, six, seven meals with protein all in them? Um, do I have to get protein at certain times, like after my workouts or before my workouts? No. You don't have to worry about any of those detailed specifics. You might find that works better for you in the long run. We'll talk about meal timing a little bit later, but total protein intake for the day is the most important factor. It doesn't, mean, doesn't matter if you get it in the very beginning part of the day or at the very end part of the day or spread out throughout the day. I would say that the most important thing is total protein intake. How you divide that up, like with meal timing, is gonna be up to you and your preference and your schedule and your lifestyle, okay? So don't stress out about that. Number three is carbs and fats. So once we figured out total calories and we figured out total protein intake, then we, what we wanna do is we wanna figure out our carbs and fats. Like when you're picking between carbs and fats, just think of the type of person you are. Do you tend to like fats more or do you like to tend, you know, tend to like carbohydrates more? Um, if you're very active, like if you're somebody who does a lot of weightlifting or a lot of sprinting or a lot of high intensity activity, Carbohydrates are typically going to fuel that type of activity a lot better. Um, not always, but in a lot of cases, that is going to be what, what you see in, in people that are lifting weights and, and doing high intensity type exercise. If you're re relatively sedentary and you're not really moving that much, like you're not really you know, going for you know, long runs or walks or weightlifting and things like that, maybe you're just getting started with nutrition, then you might like it better to, you know, when it comes to fats, you might like more of your calories coming from fats and that's totally cool. Remember that carbs and fats can be preferential. They can be based on what you like, right? They can help, um, you know, having certain carbs and fats can help you with your, you know, weightlifting or your activity, but it doesn't have to be, you know, set in stone. It can be, you can flex. Um, a lot of times what people will do typically 
with, you know, when it, if they're really, really advanced is they'll have more of their carbs on their days when they're active and they'll you know, sort of switch their macronutrients to have more fats and less carbs on days when they're not lifting weights or not that active. So not saying you have to do that, it's just something that some people choose to do because again, different fuel sources fuel exercise in a different way. Um, for now, if you're sort of just new to this, don't complicate it any more than it already is. Just know that you need to set your carbs and fats up so they work best for you once you have figured out your total calories and your protein intake. All right, now let's talk about food quality. Now, all, you know, all the time I'll get messages from people saying, oh, I should only eat clean to lose weight, right? Like if I wanna lose body fat, I have to eat clean, I have to eat. I'm like, what does that mean? Are you cleaning all of your food? Are you only eating you know, healthy foods, you know, quote unquote? Food quality actually doesn't matter that much when it comes to losing weight. I'm certainly not saying that you shouldn't prioritize food quality, but when you get down to the science of it, calories are the most important thing. There's a uh, research professor uh, in nutrition who did a study where he only ate Twinkies or Twinkie products, so hostess cakes and things like that, uh, for three months and he lost 30 pounds. And all he did was track his calories and make sure that he was eating less than he burned. And all he was trying to prove to his students was is that Food quality doesn't matter for weight loss. Now, obviously, that's not my stance. I don't believe that you should go and eat a bunch of Twinkies as long as you're under your calories for the day because that's not gonna be a sustainable practice. And even the professor who did that told you know, his class and told everyone that wanted to come talk to him that, hey, you know, I'm not gonna do this the rest of my life and this is not gonna be a sustainable practice. I was just trying to prove a point. So food quality is important in the sense that it's going to make your weight loss easier to adhere to. It's gonna make sticking to a calorie deficit easier to adhere to. So please don't miss, you know, interpret this as food quality is not important. It's just not the most important factor for losing weight. It definitely influences how consistent you can stay with a calorie deficit. And you certainly can't get the amount of protein you need a day just eating Twinkies or junk food. So again, it plays a role, but in terms of the list of importance for purely just weight loss, if we're just looking at it from a weight loss standpoint, food quality is um, the fourth priority. All right, number five is going to be meal timing. So the times at which you eat a meal. Um, there's endless debates online about intermittent fasting being better for fat loss or eating breakfast being better for fat loss. There's all these different you know, uh, methods for you know, losing fat that people like to argue about in terms of being better or worse or whatever. Um, studies will show that you can lose body fat eating three meals a day, you can lose body fat eating six meals a day, you could eat 12 meals a day as long as you stay under your total calories. So for those that like to snack and have meals, as long as you portion out correctly, you'll have no problem you know, eating the way that you want to so long as your total calories are you know, equated for and you are in a calorie deficit. So just keep that in mind that the amount of times that you eat and the times that you eat do not matter so long as you keep your total calories in check. All right, so number six is stress and sleep. Now, I don't want you to think that stress and sleep are not important, but as far as they influence weight loss, they're not the most important factors, okay? The way stress affects weight gain or weight loss is total calories consumed, okay? So a lot of times when we're stressed, we'll reach for junk foods, we'll reach for pleasure foods, and a lot of times we'll overeat them because they make us feel good and we don't really care about the calories, we just wanna feel good, and so that can definitely influence your total calorie intake. But it isn't to say that if you are stressed out, you won't lose body fat. There's this idea that when you have high cortisol levels that your body is blocking fat burning, that's not a real thing. Typically speaking, when it comes to stress, and I've done a video on this already, so I'll keep it short. When it comes to stress, what's happening, and, and the reason why you'll step on the scale and you won't lose weight is that you're retaining a lot of water. One of the effects of stress is cortisol, and cortisol is a hormone that helps our body retain water. So this is a survival mechanism, and it's actually very important for survival, except a lot of the stress that we encounter in today's world is mental and not necessarily physical. So it's sort of masking your fat loss. If you're in a calorie deficit and you're losing body fat, but your weight isn't changing, you probably have higher cortisol or you're retaining water. Sleep can affect total calorie intake because a lack of sleep can affect your appetite. So a lot of times, um, you know, the studies will show that if you have a, uh, less hours of sleep, you're more likely to have a, a dysregulated appetite. Not always, but in, in some cases that can happen. So, you know, you might actually 
you know, want to eat more on a day that you're not sleeping as well because things aren't regulated, you haven't recovered properly through sleep, and so that can affect total calorie intake. But if you only get four hours of sleep a night for you know whatever reason, it doesn't mean you can't lose body fat so long as this total calorie consumed and calorie deficit is still in check. All right, now that we've talked about calories in, let's talk about calories out. Let's talk about how our body burns calories. So the first way our body burns calories in the, in the most calories that it burns during the day is through resting metabolic rate. So that's just our metabolism that helps keeps our organs functioning and our body moving and you know our brain functioning and all these different things. So it's just keeping the lights on essentially. It's just the basic fundamental uh, functions of our body. And that accounts for 70% of the total calories we burn. So that's a lot, it's a huge chunk. It's the greatest chunk of calories that we spend uh, a day. So keep that in mind as we get further down the list. The second is NEAT, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. You wanna think of this as sort of subconscious moving or, or activity that takes place as a result of something else that you're doing, okay? So for instance, fidgeting, right? That would be considered non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Um, mowing your lawn, the, the goal is not to walk around your lawn, it's to mow your lawn, but to do that, you have to walk and push your mower. So calories you, you burn doing that. Um, walking to and from your car when you go to the grocery store, if you park further away, obviously you have to work, uh, walk further. So these are all types of activity that aren't purposeful exercise, right? You don't drive to the grocery store and walk to and from the grocery store to your car back and forth and try to get exercise that way. It's just part of what you do as a human being in everyday life. And then we have TEF, which stands for the thermogenic effect of food. This is how your body burns calories digesting food. So it actually takes energy to digest the food that you eat, right? It goes in, you break it down, you assimilate it, you absorb it, and then you excrete it. So that all takes you know, energy to do that. And it, and it accounts for about 10% of the total calories that you consume a day. Now, something about digestion that's really important to understand is not all foods take as many calories to digest. So for instance, like protein takes up to 30% of its calories just to digest it, which means that if you eat uh, a total of 100 calories of protein, let's say, 30 of those calories, 30 of that 100 calories, is used to just digest the protein, right? So it's one of the reasons why eating a high protein diet can actually be a great way to boost your metabolism because it takes energy to break that protein down. You know, when you compare that to something like carbohydrates or fat, carbohydrates is anywhere between two to 6%, and fats is only between one and 2%. So, if you want the best metabolic bang for your buck when, you, when it comes to consuming food and burning calories with digestion, make it protein. Doesn't mean all your calories need to be protein, it just means make sure you're getting the upper limit of your protein, which is another reason why when it comes to calories in, total protein intake is number two on the priority list. All right, very cool. So then next would be activities uh, that are focused, uh, that are, or I should say exercise that is focused or activity that is focused on just the activity or you know, you know working out or going for a run or doing some type of cardio, whatever it might be. So this is purposeful exercise. And this accounts for a very small amount. It can have an upper range of anywhere between 15 to 20%, um, but on average it's a, it accounts for about five to 15% of total calories burned, which is not a lot compared to something like resting metabolic rate. The reason why it's not the best idea to try to burn as many calories as you can through activity is because eventually what ends up happening is you have what's called a constrained effect of exercise. So as your body gets more adapted to the type of exercise that you're doing, you put the same amount of effort, let's say you go for a run and you burn 300 calories. 60 days from now, you will still do that run, but you'll burn half the amount of calories you used to. Okay, so again, you used to burn 300 calories on a, a run for let's say an hour. Now you only burn 150 for the same amount of effort. That's the constrained effect of exercise. And your body's essentially adapting and becoming more efficient at the calories that you burn so that you don't necessarily burn so many calories and not be able to eat as many. And you know, it's a survival mechanism essentially. So um, that's one of the reasons why it's not a good idea to chase fat loss with exercise. It's best to use exercise to build muscle, to keep your heart and your brain and your body healthy and functioning, but to really focus on the calories inside of things when it comes to losing body fat. One of my favorite ways to coach my clients is to focus on strength training so we build muscle or maintain muscle, do cardio as needed. So, you know, if I have a client that likes to go for a run or likes to do, you know, daily walks, that is what we focus on. We focus on step count 
as opposed to like how many miles they ran. Now, if they like to run, I'm not gonna take that away from them, but it's not a necessary part of losing body fat, all right? A necessary part of losing body fat is being in a calorie deficit and maintaining or building muscle if that's if you can. If you're new to exercise, you can definitely build muscle in a calorie deficit, but if you're more advanced, it's gonna be very challenging. It's better to do in a calorie surplus. Okay, cool. So number five is going to be stress and sleep. So just like over here, we were talking about stress and sleep, stress and sleep can affect calories out. I mean, think about the last time you were really, really stressed. You probably didn't want to do anything, right? You probably just wanted to sit on the couch and eat a bunch of food. I know that's where I've been in the past. I know that you've probably been there too. So stress can affect how many calories we burn in the sense that we don't want to go out and exercise and we don't want to move. When we're stressed out, we just want to plop on the couch and relax and, and you know decompress. Totally understandable. But again, remember, stress affects you know things like resting metabolic rate and activity. Same goes with sleep, right? The less you sleep, the less you're going to want to move, right? If you don't have any energy, if you haven't recovered from a, you know, from a good night's sleep, you're not going to want to engage in activity. You're probably naturally going to move less. You're going to fidget less. You're going to do things around the house less. You're going to have less energy to do things. So your body isn't going to, you know, burn that many calories through something like NEAT, all right? Now, I forgot to mention that NEAT accounts for the second most amount of calories or potential amount of calories that you can burn a day outside something like resting metabolic rate, which is one of the reasons why as a result of the, you know, the human population being more sedentary, we have had a harder time keeping our metabolisms high. We've burned less calories total as a species and we've eaten more calories total as a species as a result of having you know, food around us 24 seven, which is sort of the model for obesity. It's at least one explanation as to why obesity is so prevalent in today's world. So anyway, that is my talk about prioritizing calories in and what to prioritize on this side of things. You know, what to prioritize when it comes to burning calories. You wanna prioritize strength training and step counts, a low intensity type activity that allows you to be more active without you know, overdoing it from uh, you know, high intensity type stuff to help you lose weight, lose body fat, and feel great. Thanks for watching my video today. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And then don't forget to tell me down in the comment section below what your goals are and what you're striving for so I can help you out. And then if you like this video and you want to see more videos like this from me, make sure you hit subscribe, hit the bell so you get notified. And then if you feel like this would help one of your friends or family members help them lose weight, make sure you share that with them as well. All right, thanks a ton for watching. I will see you in a future video. Gunners that'll hit you out of nowhere like epiphany Really that's it to me Aside from the obvious man, it changes the scenery Testing me, gon' have my niggas test the machinery They say that they happy, my man, that's not how they seem to be The boy, he wild and peaceful, rest in peace, Tina Marie Ethics and values, mob traditions, old-fashioned Monopoly actions, Ronnie buying up rent, but like he's still in Akron A lot of pain, a lot of